Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to Moscow. Now I'm going to do a bit of a walk around today of a supermarket here in Moscow. It's called Globus. It's actually more like a hypermarket. Now on the back of a few recent videos I've done at different supermarkets around Moscow, I thought it would be kind of appropriate to come here to Globus just to give you an idea of the difference between maybe a kind of discount supermarket and something a little bit more middle of the road. Uh, it's not sort of high-end or premium, so let's go check it out, shall we? So before we head on inside, I just thought I'd give you a bit of an idea of where we are here. So this is actually on the upper level of the shopping center. It's built over three levels, essentially, from where you come in to where you do shopping and then upstairs where the food courts are, but it's actually a larger shopping center than anything in all of Australia, which is a bit hard to kind of understand. I'm down here by register 57, so they've got the self-checkouts just there as well. And as we swing around, you'll see, I mean, not every register's open, but pretty much every second one is. And it goes all the way down to the end there. There's the actual main shopping center right here and the main middle atrium. This is called Salara Shopping Center. It's in the southwest of Moscow. This is actually my own sort of main shopping center that I'd come to visit, but uh, I thought I'd come here and just sort of point it out. We'll go have a look at a couple of prices here and there in the shop as well. Now, it is currently 7 p.m. on Sunday night. So I didn't come, you know, lunchtime on a Monday when, you know, it always looks quiet in the shops. Uh, there is a lot of people around, uh, firstly shopping in the supermarket, but in the shopping center generally. So we'll head on in and let's see what we can find. So like in a recent video I did at Da, they actually have a trolley system here as well where you put the 10 rubles in. There's actually a lot of trolleys. There's quite a lot out at the moment too. And then the most popular way to do shopping at the supermarket in Moscow is these kind of hand carts here, or little hand trucks. And look how many there are. There is hundreds of them. And this guy here runs around kind of collecting them from all the end, ends of registers and fills them back up again, but there's a lot of them. So I really wanted this video to kind of give you a good idea of how busy it is on a Sunday evening now. Very typically, Saturdays and Sundays are the main shopping days for most people in Moscow. They're non-working days. Essentially, it's the weekend. There's some um, ready-to-eat meals here. These are mostly all the salads. So you can get sort of prepared salads, take them home, eat them right on the kitchen table. But I hope we kind of get an idea of how busy it is on a Sunday, 7 p.m. Now, this shopping center is open every day from uh, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So... This is actually kind of reasonably early. Have a look at this little display right in the entrance here with the fireplace. And they've got the wine here. I love how they do these kind of little displays where they kind of give you all the suggestions of, you know, what you should do. They've even got the kind of the teacups right up there as well and the spoons to go with the coffee. Now there is quite a lot of new subscribers to the channel who came over from Appalachian Homestead by Patra. I think I'm getting this right. I kind of was in a bit of shock this morning when I woke up and saw all the new subscribers and comments. I'm going to get around to answer a lot of them. But uh, just so we can just compare the uh, price of bananas, these are always front and center in most supermarkets in Moscow. So these are by the kilo, okay? So just keep that in mind. So for a lot of people in America, they go by pounds. It's around about, I think it's about two pounds to a kilo, but 62 rubles for bananas. And then we've also got Kiwi fruit, kiwi fruit here as well. 64 rubles for a kilo. And right at the entrance here, they also have all of the ready meals as well here. So these are all of the kind of pre-cooked meals. There's some fish and salmon there, some pastas, lasagna, and the lady basically weighs them out for you. And then there's more on this side over here. There's some plof right there. Look at the plof. Oh, very nice. And there's all kind of, these are all basically just you heat them up and eat them as they are. And then this gentleman here will weigh out what you want. He's doing some potatoes for somebody. So fruit and vegetables are always front and center pretty much in any supermarket anywhere in the world. I don't think there's anywhere you'll ever go where it's not right at the front. So one difference here when you actually buy your fruit and vegetables, you actually weigh your own on the scales. Let's hopefully these ladies will do this and show us. So you kind of put on what you've chosen right there and there's a lady there she puts the bag on and even if you just want one you just put the orange press the button it weighs it out and you get a sticker and off you go 
Now this supermarket isn't necessarily the cheapest one in Moscow. It's got a huge selection. It's got a lot of choices. It's not going to be kind of like the bargain supermarkets where they're really kind of, you know, much lower prices, but the assortment is what I really want to show you here. Just by doing a little bit of a walk around. See the guy right there with the pallet jack bringing uh, new potatoes. Uh, you can see how many choice of potatoes there are right here. So there is a couple of different types of potatoes here. There's the unwashed ones, which is what we really want to look at. These are 19 rubles a kilo. Now they're not awfully big, they're kind of medium size, but they kind of do the trick. And then over here is the unwashed carrots. You can see they look like they literally just come from the field. These ones are 14 rubles a kilo. Now just coming around the other side, I wanted to get the price of the onions here. These are the kind of, I guess, unwashed onions, if you'd like to call them that. And these are 17.79 rubles per kilo. So yeah, these are all the unwashed sort of section, but it's a little bit of a fight to get into everything at the moment. There's, uh, I'm trying to be polite to everybody filming, but there's uh, a lot of people kind of doing all their uh, Sunday shopping here. There's some uh, peppers right here. And then there's also some pre-packaged vegetables as well here. So you've got mushrooms, 99 rubles for a kilo. And then cucumbers or cukes. I like to call them here a lot. These are 69 rubles a kilo. So as you can see, no matter what fruit or vegetable you want, it's definitely more than available in here. And you can see that they're filling up the sections as quick as they kind of sell out here. There's more of those kiwi fruits. There's persimmons over here. There's one lady getting some plums off in the distance. And then again, everybody does their own weighing of their fruits and vegetables here, which is kind of something you don't see in the world. Most of the time it's done by somebody else at the counter when you pay, but press the button, get the sticker, and you've paid for it. Well, once you get to the register, you pay for it, of course, but here's the classic, I guess, Granny Smith apples. 89 rubles for a kilo. I don't really like these green ones. They're always a little bit sort of sour, you know? My wife loves them. I don't like them that much. And then over here is the first part of the deli. Now, the delicatessen in this store is massive here. This is just sausages right here. And you can see the ladies getting these sausage links. And again, you can do everything by weight. So everything is processed and produced in the store. So they've actually got the uh, machinery all in the back here where they do everything in-house. They've got all the freezers and fridges right behind the counters. This is actually the meat section here, but it's not very big. Typically, a lot of people go to butchers where they live or closer to where they live than coming here. Of course, there's a bit of a line here for the meat tonight, but I know for us, we don't tend to buy meat here. That's why you don't see a very big amount of it in this supermarket, considering how huge this place is, because a lot of people will buy their meats from butchers. And if we do have any parents watching the video, which I'm sure we do, you know, with kids, you can bring them to the aquarium here in Globus and uh, check out all the fish. There's one doing a little bit of backstroke over here, but it's quite a lot in this left-hand tank. And then these are all by 100 gram weights. So if we have a look, I don't know all the varieties of fish, but I won't put the price up for these, but if you look 38 rubles for 100 grams, so uh, uh, 53 rubles, 149, I guess, depending on the different variety. Uh, and then over here, then there's all of the still fresh fish, fresh salmon. There's a whole row of it over here. It kind of just keeps on going all the way down. Now, I don't think we're in Russia if we don't have caviar in the shopping center or in the supermarket. So uh, there's a whole lot of different choices of this too. Uh, it varies considerably in price. The smallest ones over here, 500 rubles. And these are all canned ones and sort of pre-packaged ones. And then over here, I'm gonna show you the kind of, the top dog in the fridge right here. 15,599 here for this one. This is a, also, you'll see these are in the anti-theft cases. Obviously they do that anywhere in the world. So yeah, there's a lot of different types. Again, it's not hugely popular in supermarkets. Caviar, a lot of people will get this at a uh, fresh food market in Moscow where they live, or even where I live. I can go and get caviar from a uh, 
fresh fish market versus coming here. It'd be a little bit cheaper too than these prices. You can see all the sliced salmons here. Yeah, salmon's usually popular. My wife likes to have this on for breakfast on toast or on, on bread with a bit of cream cheese. Now I have pointed this out in maybe one other video on the channel as well uh, about the uh, frozen fish. So they've actually got frozen uh, fish of different sizes and types and brands here. And then basically you actually take it out of the uh, freezer yourself, put it into a bag, and then you've actually got the weighing scales where you'd weigh it out. Uh, right onto the uh, scales off in the distance there. You'll just see there's one right here. And there's a lady getting some uh, shrimps right there. And then she'd weigh them and get a sticker for the price. Now, predictably, there's not too many people in these couple of aisles here. This is the health food aisles. And somebody did mention this in a comment about health food items in the uh, supermarkets in Russia. Is there a health food section? And there is. It's not very, very... Uh, popular I guess it's not very busy but definitely there is health food items in Russia in supermarkets look there's not even a person in here now through the middle of the supermarket here they've got all the different promotions and specials and whatever's the uh, kind of weekly special here is the Heinz ketchup or tomato sauce so it's 74 rubles 99 for one package now does anybody know on the bottled or glass bottled Heinz, they've got the 57 on their 57 varieties. Now in Russia, I'm pretty sure that we've got about 15 or 20 of them of different varieties. Uh, a lot of people like to use these on barbecues, like when you're eating sort of meats. I just noticed one here, I'm not sure. It's a limited edition one here. So yeah, with tomatoes <laughs> right on the front there, so. Yeah, there's a, a lot of different varieties. Actually, there's the 57 right there at the bottom. So, if anyone's ever seen the 57 varieties, or haven't seen them, I think they're right here in Russia. And then plenty of pastas. There's the whole aisle here of pastas. Now, the only thing that really bothers me when I come to buy pasta in Russia is they've got all the pastas in one aisle, and the actual pasta sauces are nowhere near this same aisle. So you come to buy your pasta over here, then you spend about another five or 10 minutes going up and down the aisles, looking for all of the sauces that you're gonna make your pasta or spaghetti with and things like that. Here you can see one of the brands here. These are the small little elbow pastas. This is 84 rubles for 450 grams. Here is the long life milks, actually, uh, in Australia, we would actually have a lot of long life milk. My wife and I, that was pretty much normal that we'd have in our house. There's kind of one of the home brand ones here for 79 rubles. These are for one liter containers. This one's actually got 970 mils. This is how they're sort of starting to do it now, right? They take a few milliliters out. 73.99. So yeah, if you want long life milk. And these are basically the house eggs for this supermarket here. They're 92.99 rubles. So the eggs in Russia are in a package of 10, by the way, not 12. So if that's a factor, if you're working out the price differences, I don't know why they don't have a dozen eggs in Russia, but it's just how it is. And as we swing around over here, this kind of entire, I guess about three quarters of the shelf is all mayonnaise. Look how many types of mayonnaise you have. It just goes on and on. And there's actually some refrigerated eggs tie on the end there as well, but a lot of different flavors of mayonnaise. And then if my mum was here in Moscow, this would be her favorite section here with all the salamis and all the cured meats. And again, pretty much most of them are packaged and prepared in store. So you'll see here, the uh, staff behind the counter there doing all the weighing out of sizes and weights of what you want to buy. And then there's all the hams on the right hand side here. Now I'm not going to show the entire store because it just goes on and on and on, but I just want to focus on a few different things uh, particularly. But after all the different deli hams, it goes then into cheeses. And these are all the packaged cheeses right here. 
And they've actually got little country flags on them, so you can see all of the countries. Russia, Switzerland. So yeah, we can still get Swiss cheese in Russia. No problems at all. Now, I'm not very good with all my country flags, but I'm pretty sure that's Argentina right there. And then I think this one is Belarus. And of course, there's quite a few other Russian cheeses looking all the way back down the uh, shelf here. I think if I was to kind of count up the amount of cheese varieties here, there's probably 70, 80, 90 types of cheese between the kind of main deli counter, then all the packaged cheese over here and then it goes around to the next aisle as well so yeah they've even got the big uh, ones in the fridge at the back there but i reckon 60 70 80 i don't know how many varieties they've got even under sanctions there's still so many varieties of cheese so i made it down to the bakery section and being late sunday night i guess they're not doing any production right now there is a couple of bakers back there and we've got the one here that does the lavash. This is kind of the big heated kiln where they do the bread as well. And then all the bread, I reckon it's about 98% of the bread that's sold in this store is all baked in-house. Literally everything. So, and there's a lot of varieties of bread as well. So a classic loaf of bread here, half kilo, 35 rubles, 0.99. There's some kind of I guess brown bread, kilo of brown bread there, 64.99. So yeah, there's uh, very reasonable prices on bread. Now, every time I go to a supermarket and I see this American sandwich bread, Harry's right here. Now, you guys from the US, I'm sure, I don't think maybe Harry's is a well-known brand, but have a look how white this looks. Now, I hope on the camera it looks as white as it really is in the store here. It's not particularly cheap either, 109 rubles for a half loaf. They like to do half loaves in Russia. They don't tend to do full loaves terribly much, but American sandwich bread. So I think as far back as COVID, there was always shortages around the world for toilet rolls and toilet paper. But here in Russia, no issues with stock. Pretty much all of this is made somewhere, either Moscow, Moscow region, St. Petersburg. So it's all readily available in Russia. So we'll just have a look here at a couple of different types. Nice. They do even have Kleenex here, which I never, we don't buy the Kleenex one personally. We buy this Ziwa right here. This is eight rolls package and it's uh, 219 rubles. And they're just coming over to the beer section. The beer section is right across from the toilet roll section. Of course it is. There's a lot of choices of beers. Pretty much everything's by the bottle here. You don't tend to buy it in a six pack or in a case. So you buy it individually. So if you just want one can or one bottle, you can. Now Corona, I'm sure everybody knows, this is imported. So this is probably as high as uh, a price of beer as you can find in Moscow. 149 rubles for a bottle, but everybody knows famously Corona it has to come from Mexico. So. They got the canned ones down there as well, but you do have a lot of choices. This store has a lot of uh, German beers. Uh, because Globus is a German company, they obviously bring a lot of their own brands right over from Germany. And I like how they combine the chips over here as well. So you buy your beer and chips at the same time. Is the last for tea. <laughs> and then there's the boutique beers as well. So if you want something a little bit fancier, there's lots of choices. Now, I do kind of hope this video doesn't end up getting too long and you are uh, kind of happy watching it. Uh, it is actually a little bit longer if I kind of point out more products in the video and show all the prices. So uh, as I head down the cool drink and chip aisle now, I'm gonna go have a look at the sodas and see what they have. So maybe they've got some Coca-Cola. I wonder if they've got any Coca-Cola in here. Now, looking at this section, you'd almost think that you're looking at Coca-Cola, but it's everything but Coca-Cola. There is cool cola, there's Chernogolovka Cola. There's Bella Cola. This is the Coca-Cola from Belarus, Bella Cola. Uh, there's PV Cola. Now, I think it's not RC Cola they've got in America. They've got PV Cola here. And then just moving down to the others. No Fanta, we've got Fancy. 
And then there's the uh, Frustel, which is kind of like a lemon lime. And then Pepsi has done something a little bit interesting. So Pepsi, we, we know, has left the market in Russia. But Eves is essentially the same product. So if we actually have a look on the back of the packaging over here, uh, right here, you'll see PepsiCo. So this would actually be the Miranda right there. 89 rubles for a bottle. So if anyone is following the news about all these brands that have left Russia, so the Coca-Cola brand that's left Russia. So the brand that's magically appeared, this is actually the Coca-Cola fridges here, is Dobro Cola. So there's actually Dobro Orange there, Dobro Lemon, so that would be Fanta and Sprite. Uh, and then all the tonics are now called Rich. So they're all very, very available. They're all from the same factory which is called Moulton Partners, as the cleaning lady just goes by. So yeah, these are actually from the Coca-Cola factories here in Moscow region, but the packaging is exactly the same. Essentially what's inside, the, the Dobro orange there is exactly like Fanta. So just like the shop where we went to Da, this has a lot of pet foods as well here, the kitty cat. So these uh, kind of packages here, 21. 0.49 and then whiskers here there's a few flavors on special I guess depending on which one you want to get so down to 19 rubles but have a look how many there are these are obviously all the brands and the different flavors but there's a lot now or oh, whiskers right here so these are all on special the uh, whiskers ones now, I don't have a cat or a dog myself. We want to get a cat, but uh, I would imagine, I don't know, a cat's particular about which one they're eating. You'll see all the dry food here as well. There's some more brands. So yeah, there's no shortage of pet food. So not just to single out the uh, cat lovers. Here's the uh, fish food. <laughs> no, I really want to show all of the uh, dog items. I guess there's some fish lovers as well. Oh, there's some... Hamster food there as well. Rabbit food. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize. Oh, here's all the bird food, or bird seed. And then all of the uh, food for dogs here, all the biscuits, pedigree, definitely in Russia. Uh, lots and lots of it. Now, I really don't know pricing of these. So this is 2.2 kilos, 537 rubles. I don't know if that sounds expensive. I guess I'll put the price up on the screen and you can figure it out. But yeah, the entire aisle here of uh, dog foods, and there's kind of even like gourmet ones here and there's little cans. There isn't the kind of traditional cans as much in Russia that you'd see in uh, Walmart or in Australia in Coles and Woolies, Asda in England. Now, I think in Appalachian Homestead Petra's video, she pointed out the kitty litter, I think, if I'd mistaken. I did watch the entire video. And three kilo bag, is that about six pounds or so, is 96 rubles for three kilos. So just looking at the rest of the variety section here, there's uh, pretty much anything for your house. So there's the car section. Here's the stuff for your uh, kitchen, for your home small appliances there's mostly just things like kettles and toasters and things like that here uh, they don't have any white goods at all but there's also the gardening section off in the distance and as we wrap back around there's a clothing area and all the winter boots are starting to come out now the winter jackets you'll see quite a few different types here not very very popular in here we're in a massive shopping center here with about 250 stores so I'm pretty sure most people aren't going to come to Globus to get their shoes and jackets, but they definitely have some. So my wife's favorite area of this supermarket here is the cleaning section. And here's all of the laundry powders and liquids right here. And then all the stuff for your kitchen. There's the handy wipes there and the sponges. And then fairy dishwashing liquid. Now, I tend to buy the fairy dishwashing liquid a lot because I do the dishes at home. And this is the 
kind of bottle that we tend to buy. It's 900 milliliters for 199 rubles. Now I know this has gone up in price over the last six or eight months. Maybe there's a certain ingredient in there that's not commonly available in Russia. Let's kind of put the price up and there's all of the kind of room sprays and things like that and smellies. So just walking on a little bit further here, you can see the amount of people here for Sunday night. Now, I did point this out in the other video and the people still keep questioning me about these small baskets. They're pretty much the way that everybody likes to do their shopping here in Russia. You'll see somebody has a basket right there. So people do use baskets, but they're just not nearly as popular. A lot of people won't drive to the shopping center. They'll come by public transport. So the metro uh, and bus station is right here as well. Here's all the, uh, clean, uh, the hygiene products for men's and ladies right here. So yeah, you'll see these baskets are kind of everywhere. And a lot of people will just basically buy one or two bags worth of things. They won't necessarily do like a big shop because they've got to catch public transport home. Here is all the toothpaste and toothbrushes. So a fairly classic tube of Colgate, 101.99 rubles. So probably this store doesn't look as tidy as what Da did, but it's very well stocked. It has a lot of products. I just think they, uh, they concentrate a whole lot more here on just refilling and getting stuff out maybe not necessarily on the kind of perfection and look of the store. Here's all of the uh, pickled vegetables. You see all the gherkins and different uh, uh, vegetables that are pickled. So the one thing that isn't nearly as popular in Russia too is frozen foods. There is so much fresh foods that you don't really need to buy frozen food too much. There is literally two aisles of it here. These are about three quarter length aisles. Uh, a good amount of it is actually taken up by pilmene, which is the, the uh, dumplings with meats in there. And then actually on the other side of this aisle is all of the ice creams. Obviously with colder weather coming on now, not nearly as possible, uh, as popular, but uh, you'll see there's not that many people in the frozen section. Okay, everybody. So I, I really want to thank everybody for watching this video. It's kind of a bit of a follow-up to the Da supermarket video, but it's a little bit of a more upscale kind of supermarket, kind of a middle, middle income, I guess, sort of supermarket. I mean, a lot of people shop here no matter what their income is and salary is, but maybe a tiny bit higher prices. Uh, not very high, but yeah, I hope you like this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, post a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, just comparing maybe the two supermarkets or what your supermarket's like at home. Uh, you know, this isn't perfect tidy like the Da was, but you know, this is a high turnover supermarket, so there's a lot of people shopping here. Literally, you can see that walking around. So, yeah, if you uh, are new to the channel, thank you for watching uh, this next video. Uh, there's a lot of new subscribers uh, from Appalachian Homestead Petra. Thank you. I need to write you another comment to thank you for sending everybody over to watch one of my videos. Uh, it's really nice of you to do that and to mention me in one of your videos too. I was a little bit shocked when I watched it, so thanks. Okay, everybody, I put another video for you to watch right here. Maybe you want to catch another video on the channel right after this. So yeah, see you later, everybody. Bye.